FUTV, Forever United TV, welcome along as we delve into what can only be described as a negative, blunt, critical, overly critical outlook uh, in terms of Gareth Southgate and England especially. Gareth Southgate has been talking about not being interested in the Manchester United job. We're going to talk about that, thankfully, uh, because after watching last night, as I'm sure a lot of you would agree, uh, definitely was all in uninspiring, let's just say the least. I'm glad I made the decision to have a night off last night, have a few drinks. Yes, I am well fed, I am well watered, I am 70-70% fit, uh, but I'm here with you guys, uh, eyes in the back of my head, <laughs> and yeah, raring to go as always. Uh, but you sometimes sort of hope you've got plenty to read up on. When you have nights like you do, like I did last night, so I'm at a wedding, uh, enjoy myself, there's no football on, so you have a read through the papers and then you ultimately you realise that you really didn't miss much, did you? Because it was England in a friendly at Wembley, which even when Brazil are in town, equals drab, boring, dull, lethargic, garbage. <sighs> Why do they even bother watching football? That's what it is. So Southgate coming out in that interview before the game last night and talking about not speaking to anyone, is solely concentrating on the Euros. Uh, I just, it's moments like last night and games like last night that just remind you of the limitations that Gareth Southgate has got with one of the most talented squads available in world football. And the, the headlines in the papers this morning, I've got, I've grabbed the mail this morning, uh, Bitter End is the headline. I'm just looking at a, a very inexperienced Brazil side taking England without even breaking into second gear by the looks of it. Looking back on what the highlights were and what everyone is writing, I'm going to have to go into the next page. England were flat and ordinary. Brazil looked reborn. 17-year-old Hendrik, star of the show, scoring the winning goal. When you look at the team, uh, and obviously I'm catching up with everything, so Pickford, Kyle Walker, John Stones, Maguire, Chirwell... Gallagher, Declan Rice, Foden, Jude Bellingham, Gordon, Ollie Watkins. That team isn't England's strongest, I know that. Uh, if you add a couple of players to that team and it's a totally different ball game, uh, I would say. Uh, definitely in the kind of Gallagher area, uh, Phil Foden would definitely start. Anthony Gordon, you could say, is probably one of England's informed wingers right now. So it's what Southgate's capabilities are in making the most out of this talented bunch of players, which proves he is not fit for purpose for Manchester United. He's clearly not fit for purpose for United. <laughs> you only have to read through what some people have been saying. Last week, it was all pro Southgate. All of a sudden, you're hearing stuff on social media that it's if you, if you hire Gareth Southgate, then we're not going to be watching Manchester United. Lee Sharp himself, legend of the club, well, in my eyes anyway, uh, has come out and said, if United sign Gareth Southgate, I won't watch Manchester United. It all comes down to games and performances like we seen last night for England. It's, it's not going to be good enough for Manchester United to compete alongside Arsenal, City and Liverpool. And Southgate's interview before it, I think, was a breath of fresh air for a lot of United fans. It really did just hammer home like the impossibilities, even if Southgate was doing well. The impossibilities of Southgate actually taking the job at Manchester United with the task at hand. I, I'm reading in the Express this morning that Sir Jim Radcliffe is looking to possibly out 20 players. You need a manager in situ ready to go. And with the Euros happening and everything like that, I just feel like it would be an impossibility to turn this round so quickly and have someone in situ ready to go and work alongside Ineos with all of these players. Because Southgate is going to want some say, our new manager is going to want some say, it really just does narrow down all of the options for Manchester United and the one that's popping up, and I did the, I did the 10 manager ranking last night, guys. If you haven't watched that video, it's a quick, short video, so go and watch that video after we finish today, but the 10 possibilities, 10 managers that could come to Manchester United, and Ten Hag fits in there comfortably with the top five for me uh, in my analysis of all of them managers. So... Right now with Ineos, with all of these plans and everything going on, we are going to know exactly where they stand and what they plan to do with Manchester United. Because if Eric Ten Hag is in situ, then 
it's showing that they are willing to work with the manager. If, to, if Eric Ten Hag is fired by Manchester United and the results are used as an excuse, it's an easy way out, isn't it? And ultimately, you would say Manchester United managers are always going to be under scrutiny for results and they need to be, uh, they need to be better than what they are. But <clears throat> if they went and bought a new manager, it would just say to me that they want to run the ship completely and <clears throat> it doesn't really matter as much about the man manager anymore at Manchester United. This is the way that they want to move forward. So, yeah, I feel like with Ten Hag, they are, they are sort of looking at this and going, right, OK, this is the man that actually knows the ins and outs of every single player in this squad right now. He does. He's seen everything. He's seen how the club runs. He understands it. It just makes sense to keep him in place. Uh, or will they look at it and go, it is a problem with Ten Hag still being there. Uh, we want this clean break. We get rid of him. And then we dissect the squad from what we've seen. Uh, who they would talk to in terms of players that they think are good enough at Manchester United, I do not know. And this is why it gets confusing because you need a manager in that actually knows the squad. And I think that's why everyone is hoping... And I think ultimately, deep down, Ineos are hoping that Eric Tenag turns this season around so they can actually work with him going into next season and just say, look, right, we're into the last year. If things are going well halfway through the season, we'll start negotiating a new contract for Eric and we can take it from there. It is a weird scenario with everything that's going on and Ineos' intentions, I think, will know very, very quickly as soon as the final whistle goes on the last day of the season because... I think we'll start. Ian players moved out quickly before the Euros. I think they want to move fast because, as we know, when the Euros are on, the transfers don't really move very fast. Everything sort of stagnates a bit and it's a slow burner, isn't it? And all of a sudden, when everyone comes back, bang, it's pre season. All the players are coming in. You're going to have another two week break for the pre season tour, and not much goes on transfer wise in that period either. So, realistically, as soon as the as soon as the final whistle blows, the transfer window opens on the 1st of June. I think it is the 1st of June anyway, someone will correct me on that one. But it opens then. You're going to be losing, what, four weeks with the Euros and then another two weeks with the pre-season tour. So one and a half months, six weeks worth of possibilities, transfer actions, is, is going to be, well, it's going to be taken out taken out of the uh, equation with Ineos and, and Manchester United being able to do business. So I think it just complicates things even more if you're going to change a manager. Uh, so this is why I feel like Ten Hag is probably going to end up keeping his job. The more they look into it and the more of this audit that comes through, I think the reality is that Ineos will look to try and keep Eric Ten Hag. They will also be forced into action if Eric Ten Hag fails. With, uh, with the rest of this season. So I think with the big words and everything that's been said, uh, all the rumours coming out about Gareth Southgate, again, this could all be for me, and the way I want to round up this Southgate saga is that they've just tested the water again, haven't they? They've tested the water and just seen how everyone's reacted to Southgate. Southgate's come out and said no. Then England have played last night and everyone's seen how poor Southgate's football is uh, with the, the team that he's got there at his disposal. And... Ultimately, I just feel like Ineos looking in are probably going to go, well, he's not going to set the world alight straight away. He's not going to really be one for the fans. And we need the fans on board. Everyone needs to be moving in the same direction. Uh, and with everything going on with the stadium and that announcement that's going to be coming as well, then bringing in Southgate, you're going to be upsetting an awful lot of the Manchester United fan base from the get-go. And it's probably not the best way to kickstart things off. So I just look at it and go, at the end of the day, but we've got a manager in place now that the fans have taken to. Yes, there is a bit of a divide in the fan base for Eric Ten Hag, his tactics, how United have played, but still... You look at it and go, he's probably better than what else is out there right now. And for helping Ineos out at the start of this big project, I think right now is the best option. I mean, I think there's better managers than Ten Hag, I do. But I know that he is in the best situation for understanding where this squad is at right now. And if Ineos are going to turn this around in three years, then they definitely need to, they definitely need to uh, keep hold of Ten Hag definitely before bringing in the likes of Southgate, Deserve, Potter, anyone like that. Anyone like that. Uh, let's get into the chat and see what you guys think. Uh, Kaz is telling me something. Have we got an issue with something? 
Oh, I don't know. I can't help you. Uh, everything seems fine to me. Uh, are people moaning? Sound like my TV is about to start ringing. I uh, have no idea if, why we've got sound issue, guys. I'm sorry. Uh, maybe it's the washing machine in the background. No idea what it is. I can't help it. There's nothing we can do now, I don't think, guys. Uh, we're already going, so I do apologise if there is any. Apparently, it's just stopped. Uh, our man London has said, Kaz. Is it? Oh, it's an intermittent fault. That's even worse. Sorry. <laughs> I don't think there's anything wrong with it, uh, but let's just crack on, guys. Let's just crack on. Let's see. Uh, Cal says, uh, Docking are the National League at the moment. Sorry, I'm reading someone else's comment again there. Uh, you're still buzzing from the United Liverpool game, mate. That's what it probably is, yes. Uh, John says it's better now. It's gone now, says London. Posh Jam today, says Paula. Posh Jam, yeah, we nicked it from the hotel last night. Uh, <laughs> uh, reminds me of dial-up, says Samir. Don't know what that can be. I really don't. Uh, it is weird. Sometimes technology just blows up. Right, let's get into the papers anyway. Let's get talking about uh, what is actually going on. It's all covered with England stuff, uh, to be honest, guys. That's all it is. Uh, I mean, the injury to Kyle Walker, that's a big one as well for that running for Manchester City. Not really bothered about that at all. Uh, it's about time City had to deal with a few more injuries like everyone else. Don't mean any harm on any players or wish any ill health on anyone, but hey, uh, it's all good. I think the best thing we can take from today, this actually really is nothing today. I think everyone, the, the one thing I'm taking from the papers today is it's like everyone is sort of looking at this and going, Let's just get through this last international weekend. It is the most uninspiring international weekend ever. Like the build up, everything, the one bright spark out of everything, well, for United, and it would seem like most people in England, is Kobe Mainu's uh, cameo yesterday for England in making his debut in that 15 minute spell. I think he was only four passes away from where Conor Gallagher was, who was subbed on for. Shows you the golfing class there. He just looks at ease playing with better players. Which for me was the best thing to take from all of this. There's not enough write up on Kobe Mainu for me. He's all on Southgate and the doom and gloom merchants of England, which you would expect because that is just England. That is the British media. That is the scrutiny that the England national team gets. It's part and parcel. But Kobe Mainu, I think, in terms of coming into that game last night and playing with quality players, just seemed to slot in with ease. And that is a really good sign for United. If we can get our transfer structure right, then Kobe Mainu has shown yesterday playing in that team for England that he isn't afraid to play alongside quality players, isn't afraid to play his game in a quality game with good players there. I mean, you've seen the turn he did on the halfway line. I know we're only picking out moments, but we've only got 15 minutes to talk about. But it is something worth, because all Brazil are going to be talking about is a 17-year-old wonder kid in Hendrik making his, uh, making his mark on the biggest stage. Nice words from Hendrik as well, talking about uh, Sir Bobby Charlton and where he scored goals and how much that means to him. Just shows you that the lad is well-educated as well. And Real Madrid have got another superstar there. They're, they're literally working in a completely different way, Real Madrid, at the moment and how they're recruiting. Uh, and they are going to have one of the most exciting front lines you can imagine. My God. I think there's going to be a few Real Madrid players open to moves and possibly they're looking at an opportunity for a lot of clubs to go in and tap into some of their players uh, this summer, especially with all of the talent that's coming in and Mbappe going there as well. Uh, there's got to be an opportunity for uh, some of them players moving and other clubs taking them. But yeah, I think Kobe Mainu there, we might as well lard him up. 15-minute cameo, I think he's brilliant and... If United do, like I said, get their transfer structure right and get these better players in, we know we've already got a settled-in player for the next 15 years, pretty much, in that position. Like, a decade and a half is what Kobe Mania was giving and offering United right now. We need to make sure that this player is looked after. I've already said, look, let's just give him a little bit more time before he signs this contract. I'm now starting to be pushed into my place by performance after performance after performance from... 
Kobe Mainu, like the biggest stage against Liverpool shines as the best midfielder on the park and then goes and makes his debut for England. Being f the England set up forced into giving Kobe Mainu his first call up and giving him minutes on the pitch as well. Is Kobe Mainu now in contention to make this Euro squad? If he plays him again against Belgium and he gets into a couple of them friendlies before, maybe he'll get in the preliminary squad for England. Uh, then there is a good chance if he carries on the way he's going, Kobe Mainu might get into that England team and completely shut me up because it's it's scary how quickly he has gone from just coming on the scene to where he is now with England and Manchester United. He's like first name on the team sheet for United and he's getting there. He really is. Uh, let's just see. Uh, what else we've got in the chat? I'm just checking how you guys are all at with the sound and that. Kaz has got a confused face and she's not too sure. She's trying her best. Uh, but we, uh, we seem to be getting on okay. Uh, Newbie says, Mainu, uh, uh, Mainu didn't who to pass yesterday. Didn't know who to pass to. Probably meant that everyone seems static and not moving at all. Imagine Southgate at United with the current players. Uh, we are going to be relegated. It kind of works both ways. It's a good point that Newbies makes there because you look at uh, the positives of Maynou playing with quality players and fitting in seamlessly to a Kobe Maynou not getting... Oh, we're not seeing the most out of Kobe Maynou because how the team is set up and how Southgate plays and how negative he is and uninspiring he is. He's too pragmatic. He's too safe. When you've got an England team like this, Gareth Southgate is not your man. Like, if, if you gave this team, can you imagine giving this England team to another manager, a forward thinking manager? I mean, it, it would be the ultimate team. It should be the ultimate team going forward. And I can't believe I'm actually talking about Kobe Mainu being part of that. Like, we knew this kid was magic. I, I watched him last season in the under 21s for United. All season. And he was excellent then. But you're thinking like, is he going to be able to make that step up? Actually, Amari Forson was actually, for me, up there on a level par with Kobe Mainu in terms of performances last season. But Kobe just seems to have that maturity, which is just beyond his years. And I think that's shown in how he's handled his uh, time in England, how he has handled the interviews that have been coming his way, the pressure, the media, scrutiny, everything. Then making his actual debut against Brazil at Wembley in front of 80-odd thousand people. He just took it in his stride. And that is a United player. So the headlines are going to be Hendrik. Hendrik, quite rightly. I keep calling him Hendrik. It's Hendrik, sorry. Uh, I've not looked at the comments. Graham's probably already corrected me on that one at some point. But uh, <laughs> just checking. Uh, and... I think we should be doing the same with Kobe. Like, this is a United player who looks set to be a star for years to come and has just cheered up the whole international weekend. That's what he has done, and I'm absolutely buzzing for him. I'm buzzing as a United fan, and I cannot wait uh, to see him uh, back out on that pitch now. I'm really looking forward to the running for Manchester United. Uh, just what it's like, the kickoff times for United games, seriously, like... We are being completely shafted with stupid kickoff times. Like eight o'clock kickoff at Brentford, eight fifteen at Chelsea. Like the United fans are being put through it yet again, just for TV. I just needed to get that out there. It's ridiculous. It really is. Sheffield United has had to have been moved, obviously because of the FA Cup. No problem with that. I understand that. But like seriously, the kickoff times for some of these games are just stupid. And I know. It works with being successful. You have to squeeze extra games in because you're missing certain games because you're in more competitions. But we're in less competitions and we've got more stupid Premier League kickoff times than we did last season. I don't know. I don't know. They're taking advantage of it and I think it is just a chance to make more money for the broadcasters. But I just wanted to get that out there because it really does wind me up. But uh, yeah, I talked about Lee Sharp saying, please don't sign Gareth Southgate. He won't be watching United again if United takes Southgate as manager, put it that way. So <laughs> I think he echoes a lot of thoughts of Manchester United fans right now. Uh, news, other news circulating in the papers and on social media from last night going into today. United related was obviously Mason Greenwood's 
possible move to Juventus. The one good thing in this is, and I don't know how the Italian fans are going to take to Mason Greenwood in the situation. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Romero, former Manchester United number two goalkeeper, has been talking about it. He's just looking at uh, the front three of Larovic, Chiesa and Greenwood and getting excited about that. And he's just answering questions asked by a reporter. And obviously, he can only say what he can think. Football-wise, everyone's going to avoid the Mason Greenwood conversation as much as they can. But when asked football-related questions, I think you're going to get straightforward answers from players. And everyone knows how good Greenwood is. The good thing about this for us is I think we start to get a little bit of a bidding war. If there is genuine interest from Juventus, I think now we're hearing all of the Mason Greenwood stories and possibilities of him moving on because we simply because of teams doing what United have done in the years and just testing the waters like the story will come out it will spread out over there in Italy as well and we'll get a reaction from it well Juventus fans will react to it the club will probably react off that but I think everyone's looking at Greenwood and going let's just see let's test the waters and see how it how it is see if fans are up for it obviously if they know they'll be able to get a cut price for what could possibly be a world-class player in Mason Greenwood. He's got all the attributes for it. So everyone is going to be in for Mason Greenwood, I think, this summer. If there is a possibility for him to come to the club, it's like that raw generational talent, which he is, a ruined career so far. But just finding his feet again now and putting up some serious numbers again over there in a very average Getafe side in La Liga and holding them up, and not so much on his own, but playing a big part in holding them up mid-table and comfortable. People can see what he can bring. And there's going to be a lot of teams that are worth, that are looking at it and going, he's worth the risk. He's worth the onslaught which is coming. Hey right, guys, get your questions and comments coming in. I've got a few more things to talk about yet, but I want to get your comments in. Obviously, we didn't do a show last night. So uh, if you're having withdrawals, now's your time to get caught up and get your questions in. Uh, yeah, we have croissant gate, jam gate and chocolate donut gate as well this morning. It's like the ultimate temptation. And when you've been out having a few drinks, you uh, <coughs> tend to look over <laughs> at all the food on offer all the time. Give the video a like as well, guys. Make sure you're please hitting that subscribe button. Uh, we are almost through. We're pretty much through international weekend, let's say. Midway through Sunday now, I would say. We can start looking forward to what is going to be a very busy spell for Manchester United coming up. Uh, we are going to be here, there and bleeding everywhere with the, the channel and everything going on. Uh, don't forget, guys, as well, uh, we will be doing a watch along for the England and Belgium game this Tuesday. So I'll be on United Watch uh, on TIFO this Tuesday, guys. That's open to all the members. Uh, again, uh, just keep an eye out for the members videos and posts coming up. You are all invited and involved in that uh, as well. So, yeah, make sure that you do come along. We'll make the England game exciting between us. And what always happens with England as well, I've noticed, is that when we have a bad performance, they always come back, especially on the South Gate, with an half-decent one. Uh, so maybe we'll get that against Belgium. You just don't know. Uh, but it'll be interesting to see how that game goes down. Let me just see what we've got. Uh, in the comment section. If Southgate got uh, a job, would fans revolt? There would be serious unrest, I think. Serious unrest within the Man United fan base if Southgate got the United job. They really would. Uh, there would be a lot of unhappy Manchester United fans. Uh, newbies, Cubies, welcome to the Members Club. You can now join me on Tuesday, now you are a member. Uh, that was donated by London. Thank you, London. Love that. Get your comments coming in now, guys. Let's see what we can get out of this from now until the end. Uh, London's a legend, uh, says Stephanie. Yes, he is. Uh, did anyone catch your eye? I mean, I'm going through the, the England game last night and the ratings. There was only Jude Bellingham who came out with any praise, really. Uh, Anthony Gordon. I mean, you guys tell me. Obviously, I didn't watch the game. I'm only catching up right now. But all I would say is about this game is really not surprised. I didn't rate this Brazil side, but... They've got talent quite clearly and are on the cusp of probably uncovering their next best Brazil side, it would seem. Because we're talking about the best England side, a few players missing. Uh, and Brazil, by the look of it, didn't get out of second gear. 
So, yeah. Uh, what can you say? What can you say? You tell me. You watched the game. I gladly it didn't. What time is kickoff on Tuesday? I'm just going to check. Kaz is just going to check that for me now. I think it's a 7.30 kickoff for England on Tuesday. Uh, I'm sure it is. But I will double check and let you guys know when we are starting that. So what we'll do, we'll have a live stream on YouTube on Forever United TV. And then I will just let people know all the information uh, to go across to the Watch Along for England. We'll just make... Well, do you know what it will be? It will be a celebration of the last international game we have to put up with until the end of the season. That's what it is. That's what Tuesday is. We'll have a drink. We'll crack open a beer and say, bye-bye, internationals. Let's get down to the real stuff. So, yeah, 7.45 kickoff for England against Brazil. England time, that is. So make sure you're tuned in. Uh, we have 100 likes in the video. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, Adam, uh, when are Ineos getting top in class medical staff? Hopefully that'll be worked on in the summer, George. Uh, I do. Uh, I do hope that the whole restructure of United does include all of the medical team, the nutritionist, everything like that, because it's not so much the injuries that have concerned me, more the fitness levels of Manchester United over. The, the last few months of this season. We do seem to be behind teams when it comes uh, to fitness. I know we got through that Liverpool game. I just feel like the Liverpool game was just on pure adrenaline and the players were absolutely poleaxed, dead, finished walking off that pitch against Liverpool. It completely drained the life out of them. I'm so happy that Portugal have allowed Bruno Fernandes to have the rest of the week off. That's going to do him the power of good. Obviously, we've got Casemiro sat at Carrington uh, as well. Uh, he's fully resting. A few other players that United could really utilise over this next few weeks. We should be going into that Brentford game with quite a fit squad. Like, really fit squad. Because if Martinez does come back, having finished off his rehabilitation over in Argentina, he is now back as well. So we had a bit of a breakaway. Now he's coming back. Yeah, we could have Varane, we could have Martinez back in situ. Dallo did not play for Portugal the other night as well, so that's good news for us. Uh, and obviously, Harry Mambazakov is nowhere near the England squad either. We could have a fully fit, fully rested back four come. I know, Port I know Portugal could play Dallo uh, in the next game, but still, to only play one game, I think that's a bonus for us. So I'm looking at that and going, obviously, wherever is Wood. There's some here. Yeah, it's getting bored. Uh, touch wood. Uh, we don't get any more injuries right now. So when you look at it, you've got Bruno Fernandes there. Kobe Mainu, Casemiro. There's our midfield. We talked about the full back four all being fit and raring to go. Uh, obviously, we all know Kobe got 15 minutes, so he's not been overplayed. Uh, and you go into the front line. I'm actually... Uh, I think Ben Denmark played last night, didn't the guys, as well? If you can just confirm what the score was. I think Kaz is just going to check that for me now as well. Uh, Denmark's score last night and how much minutes Ericsson and Rasmus got. She's uh, full on stat mode. I didn't tell her I was uh, going to do that, so I'm just surprised with that, so give it a minute. Nil nil? God, what is the point of this bleeding international break? Like, he's just dull. Was there any exciting games at all apart from Portugal's? Uh, and Lindelof being taken to the cleaners. And Bruno scoring again. 11 wins in a row for Portugal. People keep telling me don't get too excited and stop hyping this Portugal side. You can only play who's in front of you, and that's 11 wins in 11 for Portugal. They are a threat, and Bruno is a massive part of that Portuguese team. So, come on, let's be real. Uh, London, who's just renewed his membership, has been a member for uh, over two months now. Thank you so much, London. Legend. Adam, a few days ago, you had a shirt on that said legend on it. Where did you get it? Uh, I look at your store. Cheers. <laughs> I looked at your store. Cheers. Sorry, I read that like an idiot then. But <laughs> uh, no, uh, actually, it's from Legend London. Uh, I have. Uh, I did have a bit of a setup with them. They do hook me up with some clothes sometimes as well. But yeah, uh, if you like the look of that, then I'll see if I can get you uh, any sort of. Uh, link or discount code uh, for any of the members or anyone who's 
interested in that stuff. Uh, let me just see. Adam, phone interference on live blog. Phone interference, not sure if we've got any issues still. On and off. Yeah, sorry guys, we have had a few little technical issues with uh, the setup this morning. Uh, I do apologise if that's ruined any part of the show. There's not much I can do about that. We are going to be investing more in the technical side of things, which is why I love all of your guys' input and subscribing. Just simple things like that that help the channel grow, help us evolve and update all of our equipment and everything like that. And just just make it a little bit better for you guys. Rasmus played 83 minutes, said Stu. Thank you for that, Stu. So hopefully Rasmus won't play uh, too much in their next game, which I think is on Tuesday as well for Denmark. But it's good that Rasmus has got 83 minutes in. So what did he play? 70 for United, 83 for Denmark. It just shows that he's now fully fit. I'm really happy uh, that he's got that much game time in him. So we'll have a fully fit Rasmus Highland. You will have Marcus Rashford, who hasn't had much game time. He's been rested as well. Uh, Anthony hasn't played for Brazil. I don't think Anthony was in the team last night, was he? Was he even called up to the squad? I don't even think he was. No, I think he's back home as well, so you've got him. I'm not sure about Ahmad, uh, whether he was called up for the Ivory Coast or not. Uh, but looking at it, this international break, actually, in terms of players' fitness and helping Manchester United, I think has been really good. I think it's been a massive positive for United so far because we've got players that are needing minutes in their legs, getting them minutes and coming back to fitness. We're getting players getting more recovery time who have been out injured who could be available for us uh, in the game against Brentford. And you know what? You know the situation. I mean, that usually going into these first games of the international break, uh, we're always away from home. It always seems to be the way for Manchester United. It's just part and parcel. But we've also got, on this occasion... A fully fit squad coming back, which is massive for Ten Hag, and he's going to need it. Like these players with three tough games in seven days, we're going to need to be into these international coaches and telling them, like, let's minimise the damage. You look what happened with Kyle Walker. I'm sure Pep Guardiola is seething at that, but <clears throat> there's nothing you can do. Every player should go to international break. I'm not for players holding back. I'm not going at all. I think it's part and parcel of football. And it's been there for years. It should always be the case. But what you can do is, is not play internationals at stupid times of the season and have a relationship with managers, international managers, and actually try and nurse the players through when needed, especially when it's a friendly. If it's like what's going through now with the playoffs for the Euros, I understand that everyone's got to play. The Wales situation... They have to be full ball right into it. There's nothing much more you can do. It's just the way it is. And then that's there. But I think we've come out of this all right, United. I really do think we've come out of it. It's it's finally one international break, which has worked in our favour. Uh, let me just see what else we've got in the chat. Henry says, Adam, I think Sir Jim and Ineos are making the new stadium number one priority, which it will take a lot of their time and rest come second. Do you agree? And no, I don't, Henry, actually. It will be the squad. It will definitely be the squad and it will be the stadium second. I do. But it's like they need to invest their time into the players because the stadium can be built in three years and nothing can get in the way of it. Manchester United, to be competing in three years, like Jim Radcliffe said they will be doing, this squad isn't capable of that. So it needs that work now, and I feel like it does need to be priority number one. I think he said that in his interview, like, United need to be up there first. He's getting the best in-class in positions for staff, as we already know, and then the players will come second. There's nothing we can do with the players right now. All we're hearing is speculation, but I guarantee as soon as this season finishes, it's just going to be bang, and away we go. Away we go. What's up, Cass? Ericsson got 90 minutes. That's probably good for Ericsson. That is probably good for Ericsson. Mm. Uh, Adam says... Uh, sorry, Andrew says, Adam, the number of international games has massively increased over the years with larger competitions and new competitions. I mean, you look at what's happening with FIFA now and they're looking to now bring out the Club World Cup. 
like they're looking to expand that and bring more money into that as well. I mean, honestly, when will it end? Like somewhere there has to be a line drawn, whether it be how much a player earns so a club can bring more players in and have bigger squads, allowed to have bigger squads to handle the pressure of uh, having so many games in a season. The players in the end will just end up burning out and the quality of football will drop off massively. There is a lot of games for these players to go through. And as much as we slaughter them and criticise them and say they're in a privileged position, they're playing football and being paid to play football, it does take its toll as well on the players. It does. And performances that we expect are going to just dwindle because they're playing too many games and the standard of football will drop off. It will. The international scene needs to have a good long look at itself. And FIFA organising all of this stuff, competing with UEFA and UEFA not buckling and giving all their games for their tournament, FIFA adding to that the extra Club World Cup, while UEFA are adding more games to the Champions League, they're the two that are driving all of this issue. That's what they are. I mean, the Premier League, you can't blame the Premier League. Yeah, we could maybe look at the Carabao Cup. We could maybe shorten the game. Should it be a two-legged semi-final? I don't think it should doesn't need to be uh, and I just feel like you could maybe merge both cup competitions into one and just have one big uh, one big FA Cup or whatever you want to call it one major trophy uh, uh, in the league but UEFA and FIFA are the ones to blame for all of this pile up and all the issues with players and the injuries I feel like a World Cup in the middle of a season and then barely what 18 months, we're back into a Euros with UEFA. UEFA then make plans to expand the Champions League for the next season. More games, more travelling. And then FIFA are looking to expand the Club World Cup as well. So the big two federations are at fault. I mean, the, the leagues are just trying to keep up best way they can. And I just feel like in the end, something will have to have. Some, there will be something that falls. There will be. There'll have to be bigger squads, uh, Inevitably, I think the prices of players and wages have to start being capped and brought down. Otherwise, no one's going to be able to cope. Every single manager moans about exactly the same thing. All of the top managers, because they're the ones competing in all the competitions, because they're successful, are the ones that are moaning about the massive, massive amounts of games and fixtures that are just piling up every single season. It's getting more and more and more. But I just don't know how they do it. Because the money is just going to flood in from all of these sponsors uh, and all of the federations. It's just going to be a minefield. In the end, the money is the one that's doing the talking, as it always is. Uh, how are we even linked to United? Uh, how are we even linked to Southgate? Uh, it's typical United, says Daz. Uh, I, think it's, I think it's the right way forward, says Michael. About what, Michael? Sorry, mate. I missed the first one. Uh, let's see now. Super Frank, Super Fat Frank says, financial fair play rules need more flexibility when 25% of the league has violations. Uh, the League Cup should be uh, for teams outside of the Premier League, says Stu. It's one of them awkward ones, isn't it? It's a good competition to be in, but if you get to the final, it's great to pick up a trophy, but it does get in the way a little bit, doesn't it? The Carabao Cup, it really does. Uh, Adam, if you're not having that donut, I want it. Uh, <laughs> I like it. I'm going to have it as soon as the stream finishes, guys. Uh, but yeah, it is teasing me there. It really is. Adam, I appreciate your opinion. Thank you. And if Kaz is listening, I seen you both last night on camera. And boy, she is gorgeous. There you go, Kaz. He's getting a shout out from Henry. What about me? Like, no, sorry. Tell them I look <laughs> she said she doesn't look gorgeous today. <laughs> Guys, I keep asking her. I keep saying, look, we want to do a podcast. I want to get Kaz on a podcast so she can come on. But you're going to have to start getting in the chat and forcing the issue with her, I think, on that one. She's just too nervous and not for it at the moment. But uh, yeah, I am trying. I am trying. I think it'll be good. I think it'll be good. Definitely a. Bit of a therapy session and a, like a podcast, like a weekly podcast that we can do, uh, rounding everything up. Uh, Adam is an Adonis too, says Graham. Thanks, Gray. Thanks, mate. 
<laughs> Roddy's just woke up. Morning, mate. How you doing? <laughs> a bit late on brigade. We are just finishing up, but appreciate you all just jumping in, guys. Uh, yeah, look, I understand it's uh, at the height of international football over the breaks. Football is drab. No one really wants to be tuning into anything. It's just boring, isn't it? It's a good chance for everyone just to catch up with other things going on in life, like I did last night. But I do appreciate you all tuning in for the shows, as you always do, uh, and bringing your support to the channel. But, uh, yeah, it is just one of them spells right now. Guarantee all the hype. Andy's going to be back on the show this week. We've got loads more building up. We've got a load more content coming from outside of Old Trafford and out on the go all this week as well, guys. Mixing up and bringing you different different ways of uh, uh, well, bringing the entertainment, you could say. Because let's be honest, on the pitch, when it's England, it's just not there, is it? And we need our United back. If anything, even when United are bad, it's entertaining at least, isn't it? But hey, that's us. Right, guys, that is it. We are finished, done and dusted. Uh, thank you so much uh, for tuning in. Uh, and thank you so much, everybody, for your comments, new members, uh, and all of your support over the weekend. Please give the video a like. Let's get it up to 150. Uh, before we finish up, uh, I just need my Kaz to help me out and turn my stream off. Uh, and we can finish up. Uh, she's still not listening to me. But uh, now she's here. Thank you. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. I'm nearly done. But guys, yeah, cheers for tuning in. Uh, it was a weekend off pretty much, but it's back to normal tomorrow, guys. Hope you're tuned in and raring to go. We will see you all tomorrow oh sorry no we'll see you all tonight we've got the evening show tonight just to finish it off i forgot all about it i think we're going to try and get jay on we're going to get day on i'm not having two days off God, heaven forbid we can't do that but yeah we're going to get jay on hopefully tonight as well just to look ahead to the week and go over what's happened uh, over the last week as well uh, and yeah thankfully see out the rest of this international break but guys that's it for the paper round cheers for tuning in england the crap Hopefully we can do better when we're watching a game together on Tuesday against Belgium. But Kobe Mainu is a star in the making. Cheers for watching, guys. I'll see you all later on this evening. 6.30, evening show. Make sure you're there. Full-on interactive show tonight with you guys. Uh, and let's have it. See you in a bit, everyone.